So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at reporting. Uh, the primary users for reporting may typically include the CRAs, maybe the, the CDMs, and of course study managers or project managers who want to gain a little bit more insight into the actual trial itself. So I'm going to go ahead and click on reports. And this is going to look pretty familiar to people who have used Inform in the past. We don't have too much new here, but it's always nice to go back and revisit it and see maybe some of the different things that, that we've run into. And for our new Inform users, we certainly want to show the power of reporting within Inform. So here we have a very robust section of standard reports. And we're not going to necessarily go through every one of these, but we have some CRF by aging. Um, CRF cycle time, cycle detail by site, site performance summary. Now I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and run the CRF aging report. And as I click on it, we'll have some selection criteria here. I'm going to look at all U.S. sites, and then I'm going to do a aging interval of seven days. So once I've made my options, I'm going to go ahead and click run. So here we have a report, and what this is basically showing us is the expected number of forms for that particular site. So for 1001, we have 208 expected forms. How many have been actually completed? How many are incomplete? So completed means they're completely filled out with no queries. Incomplete means they've been started, but they either have queries or are missing data. And how many have not been started? Now, it further down, it breaks it down by less than seven days, greater than seven days, greater than 14, greater than 21, and greater than 28. Now that was that interval we said. So for example, we could have changed that over to 10 and that would be less than 10 days, greater than 10, greater than 20, 30, 40, etc. So this is a great this is a great tool as a study manager, CDM, CRA for identifying any performance issues with sites, how long it's taking for them to go through. Great tool to help us go out and identify training issues with sites, sites that might need some additional help. So really this is going to, as a, from a management point of view, this is going to help us help our sites be successful, which is, all, is ultimately what we want in the end is all of our data captured, all of our sites working at the best possible efficiency. So something like this is really going to help us go through and do that. Some of the other reports. I'm going to go, back, go ahead and go back to CRF reports, and we can do um, CRF cycle time, detail by site. Sorry, actually I wanted to do by site, not for site. Once again, I'm going to look at my U.S. sites, all of my um, sites, and all of my visits, and run this report. And here we can once again see expected, started, and completed forms. Um, from DOV to form started, it's going to give us some metrics. Uh, once again, DOV to form completed is going to give us some metrics, as well as SDV and locked. So here we're kind of seeing an overall picture of our study. Once again, this is going to help us determine where we may need additional training, additional resources, where things are working great. From DOV to started was going to help us identify our, our sites who are starting to get the data entry done to completed. Um, from form complete to SDV, it's going to help us identify which monitors may need some additional training. It's taking them a long time to get their sites monitored. They may need some backups, some help. Maybe we need to add some additional monitors. And then all the way over to form lock, which will help us identify how things are going for our data manager. Additionally, since, we, um, since this is by site and we're able to see all of the sites for the U.S., our numbers aren't just for a particular site. So as we come in and we see the number of days from started to complete, and we see maybe a 10 there, and we go, wow, 10 seems really high to me. But then we compare it to the rest of our sites and we see 12. Well, actually, that's pretty good. You know, they're actually, they're actually a fairly top performing site. We need to focus on other sites. So we can compare them all out and it'll help us go ahead and you know, focus on the sites we really need to do. Now, as we go back to our reports, 
we have a very similar um, setup by query as well. So once again, we come in and select our country, our sites, and our aging interval and run the report. And we're going to see the same thing for query count. Now we're not looking at open form, uh, form started, form completed, but now we're looking truly at query, um, at query performance. Now, but I can also go back and show my selections and say I want to go back and take a look at this report again and tweak it a little bit. Actually, this isn't the particular report I was looking for, but on some of the reports, you can actually take the difference between open query, uh, between auto queries and user-generated queries. So in this case, it can help them. It can help you determine how your sites are responding to queries generated by your CRAs and CDMs versus the queries in the system. So as they're going along, entering the data in the system, are they able to understand the queries that you programmed, and are they responding to them right away? And now. One, that will show you the training levels of your sites and the interaction with your sites, but it will also help you refine things for your next study. As you come along, you might see that certain queries are just taking longer than other queries to close. So you can go ahead and maybe tweak that query in the current system or just take a note of it for the next time around that you want to do something a little bit different. Uh, along, those, along those same lines, we have a query volume by by rule. So here we're able to run this report and it gives you the particular queries that are firing and how many times they're firing. So you can see here that we have a whole bunch of rules that don't fire, but then we have a couple that are just firing all the time. So what that does is allow us to take a look and see if there's any significant issues with that rule, what data or what data we're expecting them to enter. So maybe, you know, maybe there is a trend here that our temperature or our, or our blood pressure running a little bit higher than what we expect and maybe that's due to the drugs so we're able to catch it as a trend or maybe we just made our limits too tight for this particular study and we want to go in and adjust that so our sites aren't having to answer that query all the time but overall it gives us a nice idea of what's happening and which rules are our problems and then once again as we come down to some of our other rules we're able to look and say hey maybe in the future I don't want to create that rule because you know what it's not doing anything for me so Maybe I want to drop out these last 20 rules because it will reduce my cost by a little bit and it will um, speed up my development. So I don't need these 20 rules because uh, the last five studies I've had, they've never fired once. I can go in and check them. So reporting is very handy when it comes to the management details of helping and manage the sites. Now as a, oh, looks like I have another question. Oh, sorry, no. And then, as, so as a CRA or a CDM, this will be the last thing we're looking at today is ad hoc reporting. So I may want to come in as a CRA and a CDM and build some custom reports. And once again, with ad hoc reporting, I'm able to put a custom report together very quickly. So say I wanted to look at adverse events, serious adverse events. I can come in, select my site. and my subject that I can come up to my particular form, my adverse event form, for example, and I can pull out my event and then whether or not it's serious. So, and I'm actually not seeing that option here, although I do know it's here. We could add, for now, we'll just add caused by adverse event. So now, additionally, I can group by my site. And to do that, I select my site, and then I group it. And then I could add a filter on here to go ahead and filter for any of that data and run a custom report. So once I've done that, I can go ahead and run my report. And it's going to give me a nice listing of all of my drugs not caused by all my adverse events not caused by our drugs. So now that's all I really wanted to cover today. And I know we're getting towards the end of time, so I wanted to open up for any additional questions and hand it over to Tope as well for any wrap up that she may want to cover. 
Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, and thank you all for the great questions that we had uh, during the webinar. Um, do we have any further questions? Um, now is the time. And of course, you're welcome to follow up with us, again, via, via Twitter, LinkedIn, good old email, maybe even a phone call, and reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, we have a couple of poll questions in the lower right-hand corner there that's above the questions um, area there. And if you could kindly um, fill out those just two quick questions, we would definitely appreciate it. As a follow-up to this session, you will receive a link where you can go back and view the webinar. We'll break it apart into the data viewer and the reporting sections. And as well, what we'll do is for the questions that we did have, we'll go ahead and type up a little uh, response there for you and put that into the follow-up uh, communications. So with that, we'd like to thank you very much. Uh, for joining us. Um, part three will be uh, coming in the next few weeks, um, but we'll all try to enjoy a little summer before we do the next round. And we thank you so much for joining Eclipse um, for this webinar and look forward to uh, future participation and communication with you. Take care.